Okay. Mm -hmm. In this video, we're going to talk about direct functional assessment or descriptive functional assessment. It is observing the behavior in real time. So focusing on what is happening in the moment rather than relying on past report, actual observation. We're going to identify patterns and functions. So we're going to look for triggers, behaviors, consequences to understand the full purpose of the behavior. We're going to collect objective data, so describing exactly what is observed without making assumption. And this is the foundation for building our plan. And what we're trying to gather from this, again, I like saying this, it's two separate things. One is for all problem behaviors or any behavior, you may have one, you might have two that you're working with to build the behavior plan. You want a baseline, a frequency of the behavior. How much is it occurring? A duration count, interval recording, and also a perceived function. So you're that we're going to do that through ABC data collection. So why do we like this? Why do we use this? It provides real objective data. So it's not opinions. It's going to capture the real observation. You're going to see the behavior occur in real time. What is happening before it? What is happening after it? How often it is occurring? It allows us to identify those triggers and outcomes. And it is kind of the foundation. This is the most you do in the FBA process in most settings it builds these behavior plans and it's a lot more accurate and precise than interviewing. It requires a lot more training. It's more difficult. And if you think about it, we did all how to observe or the types of ways you could observe. And that was a couple hours of instruction, right? And really you should get more and hopefully you'll get more from your agency or school. To give an interview, I can probably train someone to give a pretty decent interview in 15 minutes or so. And then you won't ever do functional analysis without way more training than what I'm going to give you. It takes lots of training. So we use a couple things to do this. So one, we might use an ABC data collection. So antecedent behavior consequence, and I'll explain that to you thoroughly. Scatter plots. We talked about these, but this is also something that you might do during the direct assessment process so we can identify when, where behaviors occur over time, spot patterns, identify triggers. And then, of course, you can take your regular baseline or how often it's occurring data. And that's typically we're looking at frequency, duration, latency. We also have the IRT, which I said is very rarely used, but you also have interval rating skills. Data collection could fall here too. So these are the tools you use. Most of the time I try to do a frequency, duration, latency at the same time as my ABC data collection. And that's what I do for all my observations. I just do them at the same time. It depends on your supervisor. Sometimes that's really difficult, especially for someone who's newer to being a behavior analyst because it does take it's hard but once you get good you kind of you'll start approaching that sometimes i throw in i'll be doing a scatter plot all at the same time but you can do these at the same time sometimes people just don't have enough skill and that's also a lot of times where behavior techs come in when i was starting with behavior techs and i couldn't do multiple of these i'd probably ask like have the behavior tech come observe with me and they could do the frequency while I did the ABC. And so we would have that data all together. You can do these all at different times. That's fine. I just find like if you're in the room observing, why not get as much data as you possibly can? So ABC data collection see, sheets or data collection. Uh, we write down what happened before the behavior. We write down the behavior. You should have a pretty good idea of what behaviors you're looking at. Occasionally we walk in with these sheets, no idea what the behavior is, and we're just writing down all behaviors into the sheet. But most of the time we're at a level where we know this is the behavior we're going to work. And so we're waiting to see that behavior and we're writing that down into the sheet. And then we write the consequence, what happened right after. And so this helps us identify the function of the behavior. And here's an example. If you look at the first one, you can see the behavior is they screamed and dropped to the floor on that very first line. So you have the time, the setting, all that's important. Like who took the data is also important. So you might have variations of that in your little chart. 
before they screamed and dropped to the floor, they transitioned um, to the desk from a break. And then they also have, can we come back to our desk? They were given a prompt. Can we come back to our desk? And that was our transition prompt. The child engages in behavior, screaming, dropping to the floor. The consequence is they gave them feedback. We aren't screaming right now. And then redirection. So then another behavior occurred. And you can see from ABC, you can get frequency. I can count how many screams there were within this observation period or how many drops to the floor. If I want frequency, I do ABC and I take my frequency from there. And sometimes you might miss one and then you just make a note like another behavior occurred. So then you'll have your frequency count. The next time they started guided reading and the teacher gave them a prompt, it's your turn. And he screamed, no, all done. They put duration in here, seven seconds. The other students said, stop, it's too loud. And the teacher's directive was, we can skip you today. So, so I mean, already, just from those two, I know what this, be, there, it's escape. He's escaping hard tasks. <laughs> he doesn't like guided reading. He doesn't like to be on a desk. He prefers to be at break. You can see from these, we determine what the function is. This is a thorough good ABC data sheet. Sometimes like things are happening so quick, you have less information, but you try to get as much information as possible. Here's another one. This is a simple one. I usually start with this one first. I forgot to flip the slides. Tom cooked dinner, the behavior, Tom's cooking dinner. So when you have like a parent doing something completely not related to the child and then the child engages in the behavior, think about attention. The antecedent is also the lack of whatever function it is. So the child's used to dad attending to him. Dad's not attending. He's cooking dinner. Ethan jumps off the couch and then Tom tells Ethan to stop. If you think about this, first antecedent, no attention, engaging in behavior, consequence, they get attention. Attention can be negative verbal reprimands or negative verbal instructions. Attention is anything. So to me, like my first thought would be attention here. And then Tom is putting Ethan to bed and walking away. He put him to bed, gave him attention, but now walking away, the attention's leaving. Ethan jumps off the bed. Tom comes back and tells Ethan to stop jumping. So kid has attention, the attention is leaving, engaging in behavior, and they get more attention. Tom is filling out paperwork and not attending to Ethan. Ethan jumps off the bookcase and Tom tells Ethan to stop. So I would say for sure this is attention. This little Ethan likes a lot of attention. And whenever dad, if Tom's dad doesn't attend to him, he does something to get that attention back. You can use this to determine the function. This is my favorite ABC form for really busy people. So if I need teachers or a tech who's busy to take data, I give them this. You can modify these. So they're checks. So all the activities that the child might be doing when we're taking ABC, you can make a big list, then all the behaviors they might see or what's happening right before. So they have activity and what's happening right before. Then all the behaviors you could see and then what's happening after the behavior and then the consequences. And these can be, you can modify these check boxes to specific to that person that you're observing. This one has almost everything that could go on in a classroom. I give this exact one to teachers <clears throat> because we can see like the whole picture, but I've created ones for home therapy where we have all the activities they do as home therapy, all the things that the tech or the parent could be doing. Then we put the behaviors we see from that specific child and then the consequences. I love these because it's easy. People just check. They don't have to write. It's not as good as that narrative written data, but you still get the picture of what's going on. So that's ABC data collection. I just want to say one more thing with this. A lot of times you don't always do it in perfect order. The behavior starts occurring. You're like, oh, okay. You write down the behavior and then the you see the consequence. So you write it down and you go back to the antecedent and you think back what was occurring right before. Because the antecedent occurs and you're not sure yet if behavior happens. You wouldn't write down every antecedent and no behavior occurs. So you wait for the behavior and then you write that behavior in.
What is ABC data? It's a method of recording the antecedent, what happened before the behavior, what the person did, and the consequences, what happened after. We utilize it to help identify the function of the behavior by looking at the pattern between triggers, the behavior, and the outcome. How to collect ABC data? You observe the behavior in real time. You write down what happened before the behavior and what happened right after. An example of this is like the A, the teacher gives the student a math worksheet. Math, a student throws the pencil and yells and teacher removes a worksheet and gives a break. And then you think of a possible function, escape from task. And the benefits of ABC data is it provides objective, real-world context to the behavior, and it's going to help us identify other assess, help us verify or challenge the information from other assessments, and it will help us develop those. The FBA, and I want to say this really quick: the FBA is all the assessment data, and it becomes the behavior intervention plan. And the behavior intervention plan will tell you what to do when the behaviors occur, what behaviors you might see, what to do when the behaviors occur, what interventions you might need to use before the behavior occurs to make it less likely to occur, and what the replacement behaviors are, and what the reward schedule is for those replacement behaviors. All those things go in your behavior intervention plan. It shows you where and when the behavior occurs over time. They're useful for spotting patterns across days or settings or identifying time-based triggers like late afternoon or transitions. You can often use before formal ABC, but you can also utilize it at the same time. Other measurement options we've got frequency, duration, latency are the most common ones we will use. We went over all this. Frequency is how many times the behavior occurs. Duration is how long the behavior occurs. And latency is the time from instruction to behavior. We also have our interval. So in a, you split your intervals into equal time. You record the behavior, if the behavior happened or not with each interval. And we have those three types. We have whole interval, did it occur for the entire interval? If it stops at any point, it's a no. We have partial, did it occur at any point in the interval? It would be yes. If it doesn't occur the whole interval, it's a no. And then momentary time sampling is what occurred at the very end of the interval, yes or no to behavior. It's good for high frequency or continuous behaviors, or if you don't have a lot of, you don't have a, you're doing other things like maybe ABC data or a scatter plot, this might be the best choice. Whatever you do during the FBA process, you must continue during therapy. Because if you get a partial interval and it's like the behavior occurs 50% of intervals and you know that you have many days showing you that. And then you go to intervention and you start taking a frequency count for the behavior to occur 50% of intervals during intervention, it's a frequency count of four times per session. I don't know what that means, like how those two compare. Did the behavior get better or did it not? You must keep your data collection the same throughout baseline and therapy. Your role is like you're going to collect data objectively and consistently. You're going to describe exactly what you see. No guessing or interpretations. We're not going to say they're angry. We're not going to say they're upset with the teacher. We're going to write what we see, what we hear and see. We're going to use the operational definition from the behavior plan when you're in treatment. You might not have a perfect operational definition yet during the FBA process. That's okay. During the FBA process, we often will modify the behavioral definition to be more precise. So that's okay. And then you always want to tell your supervisor if anything unexpected happens when you're like observing for them for the observation pro for the FBA process. So the benefits of this is it shows us the real world context of the behavior. Direct assessment provides insights into the actual situations and environments where the behavior occurs rather than relying on secondhand information show you that like the interviews, the rating skills, all those things were right, or it might show maybe they're wrong. Maybe we need to rethink about this. 
And then it's also essential for effective behavior plans to create those really effective behavior intervention plans that address the root cause of the behavior. Reminders when you're engaged in FBA with your supervisor, record observations immediately while details are fresh. Don't try to do it later. It doesn't work. Keep your notes short and clear. Avoid lengthy descriptions. Focus on key details. Be calm and neutral. So you're not engaging with direct assessment. You're not changing anything, engaging with the student, doing anything. You're only observing. Even if it's fairly severe behavior, of course, always we're going to keep everybody safe. But it's better if you can not to involve yourself if you're seeing severe behavior and see how the family's always dealt with it in the past. It's not the first time it happened. You want to know what's been going on for that behavior in the past. Ask for help if you're unsure. So you always want to ask for help and collaborate with your supervisor. Observing direct assessment is observing behavior in real time to find patterns and functions. The purpose is to provide objective data, identify triggers and outcomes, and build the foundation for effective behavior plans. Common direct assessment tools are ABC, scatter plots, frequency, duration, latency. Your role is to always collect your data objectively, use operational definitions, and notify your supervisor of any new information.